So, after seeing title and thumbnail of this video, you might be wondering, Josh, what's wrong with using UUIDs in your database? So basically, there's this article from what used to be one of my favorite database providers of all time, which is PlanetScale, talking about the problems of using UUIDs in your database. And as you're gonna see, they kind of have a point. In summary, this article talks about three things. First off, what are UUIDs? And then the two problems there are with using UUIDs as primary keys in your database. And these problems are what I want to address in this video. What are UUIDs? I don't think it's too interesting, right? It goes about the many versions of UUIDs like UUID v1, how they are constructed and so on. Honestly, nobody really cares, right? Let's talk about the problems there are with UUIDs. And problem number one is the insert performance. And the basic idea of this problem is that whenever a new record is inserted into a table, the index associated with the primary key needs to be updated. So querying the table is performant. In a visual kind of way, I think it's easier to understand this is what it looks like a B simplified tree, right? So this is not the exact data structure that MySQL actually uses, which would be B plus, but a B tree comes very close to that. So for example, if we are searching for the ID five, we know where we need to start, which is on the right side of the table. The left side, we don't even need to query. And that's how our queries with an index is so performant. And while this works really nicely, there's a small problem when we use random UUIDs to make this happen. And that is, it can take significantly longer for MySQL to rebalance the tree once a new data is entered entered into our table. And basically on a high volume database, as you scale, that might eventually become a problem. So as we notice, Problem number one, yes, they kind of have a point, I guess, but is it so important? I don't really think so. Problem two, however, is really interesting. And trust me, I've did a lot of digging. This is how I spent my morning with problem two. And the results are actually really interesting because in this case, PlanetScale has a really good point. And that problem is higher storage utilization, a very real thing, as you're going to see here in a second. All primary keys in MySQL are indexed. By default, an auto-incrementing integer will consume 32 bits of storage per value. And let's see if that's true, if actually 32 bits are used. So what I did is I prepared three tables with 1 million rows each, because chances are, if you're building your own kind of project, I think 1 million rows in your database for a small SaaS company or something similar is going to be a very fair guess as to how many data points you're going to have in your application. So we're comparing three things in this example, an integer based table where we have an ID from one to a million as a number, a collision resistant unique identifier. So it's kind of the compromise between a very short kind of integer and a very long UUID that you're going to see. And we're going to take a look at four things. The total table size, which is basically how much space do 1 million entries of these actually take up on disk. And that is where the biggest difference will be. Let's verify this claim. By default, an auto incrementing integer will consume 32 bits of storage per value. Is that true? Well, let's run our query and we can see there are four bytes, which translates to 32 bits. So yes, by default, an auto incrementing integer actually takes up 32 bits of storage. And basically what they're saying afterwards is that UUIDs are absolutely huge, right? If stored in a compact binary form, a single UUID would consume 128 bits. So that's four times more than the integer. And let's see how that actually plays out in a Postgres kind of database. I found this to be really interesting. Let's see for the CUID example first, how much space that takes up instead of the integer, right? Let's run that. Whoa. That is a lot more space that even the smaller CUID already takes up with 26 bytes. And now comes the UUID. So the longest one of those three, let's say the UUID example, and let's query it. And you're going to see that one takes up 37 bytes. Compare that to the four of the integer, right? That is a pretty nuts difference. Interesting. What about the total table size? And that was pretty surprising to me as well. So I prepared the query for that the total table size. And let us start with the int example. So how much does the integer table take up all together, right? So what we're taking a look at right now, all 1 million entries, the entire table with the ID and name column, how much does it take up? And the answer is 64 megabytes as the smallest one, right? So let's note that down. There we go for the integer right here. Let's take a look at the kind of in between of the integer and the UUID. So at the CUID example, and that's going to be already 105 megabytes as the total table size. Interesting. So that's already a pretty big difference. And that's for 1 million rows, right? As you scale this up, of course, you're eventually going to get a lot more than a million rows. And the difference here is already pretty big. Now, what about the UUIDs that we're talking about here in the article? Each UUID could be stored as a char 36, consuming a whopping 688 bits per UUID. That 
that's a lot. Let's see the entire table size for the UUID example. Let's run it and that's going to be 146 megabytes. So that's a very big increase if we compare that to the integer. I mean, do just alone this part between the integer and the UUID, of course, the biggest difference, the CUID is somewhere in between. That's like two and a half times increase, right? That That's pretty nutty. So planet scale actually makes a pretty valid point here. How much space does just the ID take up if we ignore everything else, just the integer versus the CUID versus the UUID? How does that compare? So 1 million entries, but just the ID column. Let's run it. And that's going to be 21 megabytes. Let's not that down 21 megabytes right here for the integer now what about the in between for the CUID let's see let's run the query again and that's already going to be 47 megabytes so that's already a pretty nuts increase once again let's say 47 megabytes right here and now let's query the same thing for the UUID example and that's going to be 73 megabytes wow I personally really didn't expect there to be such a big difference now the interesting thing is the query times are never actually affected because everything here is indexed if we for example query the 500,000 integer or the 500,000 UUID or CUID, the query times are actually all the same. They're always around 12.5 milliseconds. So this really is just about readability, the storage size, which is quite a big difference, and then the insertion performance, which at least in my opinion is not one of the most important metrics. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this and that's gonna be it for this video. I'm gonna see you in the next one. Until then, have a good one and bye-bye.